Traveling solo as a woman. Some people still feel quite uncomfortable with this because they think it's quite dangerous. Today with us is Amanda and she's the owner of the travel blog A Dangerous Business. Amanda, can you introduce us to some um, misconceptions when it comes to solo female traveling? Of course. Um, so I think that one of the biggest misconceptions is that, as you mentioned, it's very dangerous to travel alone as a woman. Um, but I really feel like it's not necessarily any more or less dangerous than doing anything else alone as a woman, even in your hometown. In fact, in a lot of cases, it might be safer. Um, I also think that sometimes um, people think that traveling solo means that you're going to be lonely and bored, but being alone doesn't necessarily have to equal being lonely. So I think that traveling solo can be really empowering to women you can learn a lot about yourself and not to mention you learn a lot about the world kind of like outside of your bubble that you're used to living in um and you are very experienced when it comes to traveling alone do you have any tips for women who are planning a trip alone definitely i think the first tip that i would give women is to just do your homework you know make sure that you're staying in a neighborhood that's safe um, read up on what the cultural norms are, especially as far as how you dress, because if you're in a more conservative culture, you want to make sure that you're being respectful and covering up and that that obviously will lead to less kind of harassment or negative attention on your part. And also just reading up on some common tourist scams can just help you be a bit smarter about, you know, where, where you're visiting and, and kind of not getting caught up in any of that. Um, and I also just tell women to be smart, you know, don't do anything when you're traveling alone that you wouldn't do at home. Like, Don't take rides from strangers. Don't go wandering alone at night in a neighborhood that you don't know. Just kind of common sense stuff. And and lastly, just trust your gut. You know, if you're if you find yourself in a situation that um, is making you uncomfortable, just remove yourself from it because that's just really the smartest thing to do. And if you if you're still kind of unsure about things, um, you know, signing up for a small group tour with maybe a company like Intrepid Travel or G Adventures or something like that can, um, I think, kind of alleviate a lot of those tensions or nervousness about traveling solo. Yeah. So if I would want to go, if I want to travel alone, are there any certain cities or places or countries you would recommend? Yeah. So some of my favorite places for solo travel um, include places like New Zealand, uh, Scotland, Iceland, uh, even like Ireland. Places that, you know, it's not so far out of most people's comfort zones because they are, you know, westernized and people speak English and, and that sort of thing. But they're also very safe and the people are very, very friendly and definitely open to having solo travelers in their countries. So what is your best experience as a solo traveler? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have so many great experiences. I think just, just getting to know myself better and just learning that I am capable of doing anything that I want on my own. So that's probably the best thing I've gotten from it. Thank you for being with us today, Amanda. And for you women at home, are you planning a solo trip? Make sure to read the article below and check out Amanda's blog.